From the City of Angels, you're listening to the James Salazar Media Podcast. On today's episode, headlines from the world of futurism. So let me strike the music, and I'll meet you on the other side. Engage. And what's up, savages? And welcome to the James Salazar Media Podcast. I am your host, James Salazar. Here's where you get your weekly dose of pop culture, politics, and futurism. Today we're going to talk about some futurism. I've got some very interesting articles I want to discuss with you today. Discuss, discuss, discuss. So, headlines from the world of futurism. Now, I know I haven't done this for a while. Um, just been busy uh, with opera, with my uh, trying to win the diet. Um, but uh, I read a couple. I read a, on a couple of articles um, that I want to sort of have a theme about uh, what we're talking about today, and. Um, I ran into an article that talks about the dark forest. It was very interesting. And for you to understand the dark forest theory, we really need to go back and tell you these two other ideas. The Fermi paradox and the Drake equation. And let me just pull up this article. I'll be reading. I'll be talking and reading from. This article to give you an understanding. You know, the Fermi Paradox asks where all the aliens are in the com- cosmos. There should be filled with them. Um, the Milky Way galaxy has 200 billion stars, perhaps 100 billion st- planets. Even a small fraction of those planets harbor life and even... Only a pathetic scattering of those planets have life forms which become intelligent. Our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, should be teeming with alien life. Some of which would be either looking for us or discoverable for at least a little while. Alright. The number of civilizations... The galaxy should have can be determined by the equation, the Drake equation, that turns the above factor into variables. When you plug them into the formula, you find that there should be at least 20 civilizations in our cosmic neighborhood alone. But where are they? Right? This makes a factor in which we have yet to find any life in the cosmos. Almost shocking when you think about it, maybe. Um, not shocking for the religious. This seems this seeming discord between how many advanced civilization ought to be in space and the lack of evidence for any known is is uh, known. As the Fermi paradox, in in the lead to dozens of hypotheses and potential solutions over the last few decades. All right, so there we set up Fermi the Drake equation. Optimistically, thinks we should have at least about twenty civilizations that we should be discovered, and the Fermi paradox. It, it, uh, is, is saying like if that number is correct why can't we see him so uh, there's got to be other reasons why that might be it so so some of the reasons just off the top of my head after reading number one there probably were civilizations that have come and gone uh, that could have been super advanced and um, there there are an ancient society that has died off they could be million years of advancement by these people, and we still wouldn't 
uh, have existed yet. Also, um, some probably killed themselves very early, never even getting to like make radio as we have. So many solutions aim at one of the variables in the Drake equation and try to make a supported number of civilizations lower so it would be more reasonable for us to have have not met anyone yet. Some of the proposals that life started that the last life starting at all is rare. I think that's obvious. Others suggest that the development of intelligent life is a bottleneck in which Others still post that most civilization would live for a short time before blowing themselves up. Oh, that's what I said. Conversely, e not even managing to invent radio. Yeah, I said to say that. So, um, they're seeing, they're seeing SETI and all these people. They have all these systems set up. Thinking that um, life is abundant, and but they cannot find it even in our Milky Way galaxy. So now, as someone who believes, I believe that um, you know what my religious perspective is like this. Um, based upon the lack of evidence, but the uh, sh the sure footing of science that says that um, we are a mistake and everything is random, and the idea that a random universe would produce life as complex as we are. Those, those, the chances of that happening are so astronomical. And then if you find a different race altogether, the, the chances of having two races, the astronomical number goes up. That, that happened by accident. So if you have like 20 races... The number, the astronomical number for one race to happen by accident, to have 20 by accident, those numbers, I would assume, get compounded 20 times. It, it is like this, if we ever found intelligent life. It's like going to the moon and having a Mercedes drive by you while you're in your suit, your space suit, and you go, oh my god. What are the chances of that? That's random. And then another car comes by. A truck. And you go, oh my God. What is the chances of that? Woo. What? That's remarkable. And then like five other cars come by. And then you're going to say, well, you know what? Maybe they have a, like a, a, a dealership in back. Maybe they have a a a, a, um, a manufacture. Maybe they're manufacturing in them. There, you would begin to think that this seems more like a good idea than random chances to have that many races. So, if we ever do run to into a lot of space races, uh, it doesn't prove there's less of a god. It proves there's more of a god. Unless you want to believe in string theory that hasn't been proven. And with all the multiple infinity universes, we just happen to live in a universe where random parameters produce complex things. And what are the chances of that? Very low. And the statistics are very high. It's like I heard a, a mathematician say. It's like taking 100 million decks of cards, taking out all the jokers, 
putting it in the middle, one joker in the middle of the hundred million stacks of of cards, shuffling them a hundred million times, and then on the very top of the uh, deck, you flip the card over, and it's the joker. The numbers that, that of chances that that would happen by accident are astronomical. Now, I would admit that more aliens found would give me more faith in God, but it is very uh, troublesome. To religion. So. Yeah. I mean Christianity. Um, Islam. Judaism. Um, one that. Predict uh, one way to salvation. The more Asian, um, Indian, that uh, we're all one, one God, one energy. Uh, it doesn't really mess with that as much. And not, I mean, there could be God could have, we could have been. I mean, what was that? Billy Graham said, um, "We're just the only uh, Earth that needed salvation because." All the other ones uh, probably did fine. Or, but I mean, for some reason, if we found all these, uh, if we found all these races, and they all had like a salvation story close to Jesus, um, then um, that would be interesting, and it could be a plan that God plays out through the whole universe. Who knows? I'm reaching for, for 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 stars now, but um, but the Christian, Judea, Judaism and um, Islam believe that um, the universe is for the afterlife, and we are to populate it, especially if there's no death. I mean, how long would it take for humans to populate the 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 Milky Way galaxy? Who knows? So we see that these problems that the Drake equation has a very optimistic number of civilizations that we should be in contact with. Uh, the per Fermi paradox points out that uh, w looks like we, but we haven't. And um, where are they? And some of the um, reasons why. It hasn't happened. It's because they may have existed and died out. Some never ever got to the point of uh, existing past. Um, just like our war war. Our like civil war. Where they never ever even made radio or light. Um, we might be lucky in that regard. That we have come to the technological advancement that we are today. But the new theory called the dark forest. Now, the dark forest. Let me put that up. Dark forest. Dark forest. The dark forest solution explains why we haven't heard from aliens by pos positing that they are purposefully keeping quiet. The reasoning is laid out. Best in the science fiction novel *The Dark Force*, where they get this theory, by Lu Xing. The plot of the book and the second in the series concerns the question of how many best interact with potentially hostile alien life. The novel argument lays it out like this: All life desires to stay alive. Agreed. There is no way to know if other life forms can 
or will destroy you if given a chance. Not bad reasoning, knowing human history. Lack of assurance. The safest option for any species is to annihilate the other before they annihilate you. This is a, is a story at oldest time, at least on planet Earth. And let me read you a passage from this book. The universe of the dark forest. Every civilization is an arm hunter, stalking through the trees like a ghost, gently pushing aside branches that block the path and trying to tread without sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful because everywhere in the dark forest, a stealthy hunter like him, even if he finds another life, another hunter, angel, or a demon, a delicate infant, or an old man, or a demigod, there's only one thing you can do. Open fire and eliminate them. So that's depressing. Right? And um, I'm going to tell you something that I saw on Discovery Channel that sort of backs this up. Um, and forgive me, um, vegetarians. But, and this has to do with evolution. Evolution which I think is directed by God, if we ever could truly prove it. Um, it. It seems like the most likely theory, but it's still a theory until you have hard facts. So, um, but based upon what science knows, that there's no way intelligent life can be created by eating just plants. It doesn't give enough energy for the brain to evolve. We, they say that it, it would have to be meat. That you would have to eat like three tables of vegetables every single day to make sure uh, you got the brain got enough energy to eventually evolve into what we know as a human brain today. But you just need a 12-ounce steak every day to do that. Three, three tables of vegetables or just one 12 ounce steak of meat. It's enough for the brain to evolve into what it was today. I mean, there's other factors of why our brain became smarter than others. But, the, uh, but um, because a lot of other animals eat meat and they don't become intelligent. But at the very least, at the very least, the prerequisite for intelligent life to create a brain that could uh, produce that, you, they need to be meat eaters. And if they're meat eaters, they have to kill animals. And if they have to kill animals, uh, most likely they're killing for resources and killing each other. Their history probably going to be very much like I, like ours. And I wouldn't put it, past, put it past humans to go to war with a different race by uh, <laughs> because of fear and irrationality or... Uh, I, I wouldn't put, put it past humans to start a, to start a uh, a war with some another race because of some stupid thing. I mean, have you seen Mars Attacks? Um, it's pretty funny. Watch Mars Attacks. Uh, it typifies what the mistakes that humans could possibly make. And <laughs> so the dark forest theory says they're lying in wait, hiding from us. And I'm pretty sure their history is probably aggressive. And they know of many other aggressive. And we might be just the dummies just putting out settings saying, Hey, here we are. Here we are. Come and eat us. We are tasty, we have water, we have fruit and animals. Come look at us, we are special. And they might be just waiting for our space program just to be to the point uh, where we, they, we need to be dealt with. They're like, we're not going to deal with these people, they can't even get off their own planet. As soon as we get off their own planet, I'm like, uh, we got we to gotta handle these people. 
You know, that's the same premise with uh, Star Trek. You know, the humans uh, make faster than light travel uh, by folding space and reforming it in back of the ship where we can go faster than the speed of light, get to far distances of the galaxy uh, in a lickety split for a very long time. I mean, months to get to the other end, years to get to the other end of the galaxy. Um... But once they finally created warp travel, the Falcons come and say, uh, well, look at um, you now join a community of space varying races that are can go light speed. And this is how it's going to go down. That could be the same. They could be watching us, hiding from us. And then um, once they see we're we're gonna be a problem, they could deal with this harshly or make or or, or tell us the rules and how to play the game. Uh, we 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 hope the latter, but um, the Dark Forest series uh, series says uh, whether it becomes hostile or disease or whatever, all the problems that come with uh, dealing with another race, it's best not to deal with them. It's best to eliminate them before they eliminate you. So. Um, now, I know you might be saying, James, this is a long time from now. Not really. We're colliding atoms, and that could create wormholes. That potentially create wormholes and uh, answer a lot of questions. Um, we already have a, uh, a sh- sh- rocket ship that could, uh, a rocket engine that uh, could push us to very close to the speed of light. And... Um, that could happen the next hundred years. And you say, well, am I going to live to the next hundred years? Well, this next article might uh, give you hope for that. So this next article is very interesting. And it says, and we read the title, it says, Scientists dramatically extend the lifespan of mice in a genius new telomere study. Telomeres are repeated sequences of DNA material sitting at the tip of each and every chromosome in our body. When DNA replicates, for example, during the cell division, the, those telomeres get shorter every time since replication doesn't reach the very tip of the chromosome. Their existence acts like a buffer protecting the genetic material within a, our chromosomes and shorter telomeres indicate the cells are wearing out. Not good. And uh, until now, these studies have been involved trying to alter gene expression, but this new research doesn't rely on any kind of gene modification. The work builds upon past research, which indicates... Uh, um, the same telomeres lengthening happens. So let me see what we see. So finding support to the idea when it comes to determining longevity genes are not only thing to consider, but the molecule biologist, there is a margin for extending life without altering our genes. So that's very important. Um, we're looking for totally, and also, and that's not the say gene. And it's not where it should be. It's probably going to be the, uh, and which is already being done, the main source of how we're going to get young. Plus, you know, extending our telomeres. It says experiment worked as long as telomere mice, experiment worked. The long telomere mice lived on average 24% longer, were slimmer, and less likely to develop cancer. Various indicators of metabolic aging turned out to be low, too. The researchers report these mice have less bad cholesterol, nice, in their body, and their DNA wasn't damaged as much as if the animal got older. The more the mitochondria functioned well better. So, So there you go. You could live long enough to see aliens. <laughs> no, but the fact of the matter is, 
with gene editing and now with, I guess, telomere lengthening. Um, if you can live in the next 20 years, you'll live for 120, 150 with quality of life. If you can just last in that next 20 years, because the amount of, uh, in 2000, what is it, 45? What are, what are we? Where are we? Where are we? Are nineteen, right? So yeah, in two thousand forty, if you can last this two thousand forty, guess what, people? You're gonna your your, um, eighty. You know it's gonna be the new sixty, and one hundred and twenty, like one hundred fifty, is gonna be considered bad age. We're gonna go through some major, major, um medical and technological advances that will extend a human's lifespan, let alone while having artificial intelligence working on these issues about um, aging. So it's just <laughs> we're in this period where not everybody can have it. It's still experimental. I told you at the beginning of the year, my prediction of the year, we're going to see a lot of AI, a lot of things that people were worried about and talking about actually be implemented. And we're going to start hearing stories come out um, later in the year, probably the last month and for the new year of what they already accomplished. And yeah, if you can just stay healthy during this time, keep alive. The amount of things that are going to come in the next 20 years um, will seem like people are taking steroids. And you'll see uh, people's long, uh, health rebound. And you'll see a lot people live a lot longer. So, hope, my friends, I'm going to end it there. If you have any uh, questions... Um, if you have any critiques, if you thought I didn't explain anything well, if you just want to argue with me or tell me how great I am or whatever you want to do, just put it in an email form at jamesalazarmedia at gmail.com. You can also, if you're looking for coaching services, and we're going to get into um, our, our next one is going to be, um, we're going to enter the matrix, coaching matrix, and uh, we're going to go over some ideas. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you can follow me on any of my Instagram, Insta, Instagram. I mean, uh, any of my social media platforms, which would be Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, um, Twitter, and YouTube. And um, we'll be also be coming with with some videos on a new YouTube channel. So stay tuned for all that. So my friends, when the storm of life come at you and you find yourself on your knees, stand tall. Take a look at that storm and see what my sensei Jack Burton always says. Give me your best shot. Strike the music.